Hey, it's Darius, and maybe you've seen me lately on the Facebook groups giving advice to CPA candidates. Here's a couple of my favorite Facebook CPA exam groups, like the Fearless CPA exam group and the Amazing Women of I-75 Facebook group. Or maybe you saw someone recommend me on one of the Facebook groups. And one question I always get is about variances. So I thought I'd put together a couple of YouTube videos just to take care of direct material variances, direct labor variances, and of course, overhead variances. So we got to start somewhere. I suggest we start with the direct materials variances. There's two of them. And we're going to start with the direct material variance known as the direct material price variance. One of the two direct material variances that we have to know is the price variance for those materials. And with direct materials, you have one variance that focuses on spending. Did we spend more or less than what we thought on materials? And then we have another variance on usage of materials. But right now, let's look at the direct material price variance which is going to focus on the price of the materials that we purchased. And on slide six, you can see the formula for the direct material price variance. Notice what's in the parenthesis, the actual price of the material minus the standard price of the material. The focus of a variance, any variance, can be found by what's in the parenthesis. What's inside the parenthesis is the focus of the variance. In this case, actual price minus the standard price. The focus of this variance is the price of the materials. Did we spend more or less than the standard? The standard will be given. The actual price will probably be given, and you'll just have to compare. And if you spent more than the standard, that's an unfavorable situation. And then you'd multiply by, look what's on the outside of the parenthesis. The outside of the parenthesis for a price variance will always be an actual quantity, not a standard quantity, but an actual quantity. For any price variance, whether it's material price, labor price, or overhead price, any price variance, what's on the outside of the parenthesis is going to be the actual quantity. When we got all done buying our materials, did we spend more or less than what we thought? That's the actual quantity purchased times the difference in price. So let's put some numbers in. Go to slide seven. And let's determine the material price variance. Norris Corp uses material XY to make widgets. And relevant information for material XY follows. The quantity purchased, 6,500 pounds. The standard quantity allowed, 6,000 pounds. And the focus of this variance, the actual price versus the standard price. On slide eight, what was the direct material price variance for material XY? Well, the difference in price is the focus of the variance. Your difference in price of 20 cents times what now? The standard quantity allowed of 6,000 pounds or the actual quantity purchased? Right, so 6,500 pounds and the 20 cent difference. Is that 20 cents difference favorable for us or unfavorable? Right, because we actually spent less, 380, than the standard of $4. So that's a favorable price variance of 20 cents times 6,500 actual quantity purchased. And what you have here is a direct material price variance for material XY of $1,300 favorable. 
$1,300 favorable material price variance. Now, what does this tell you? What do you learn from this? All you learn is that you spent less on materials than you expected. It doesn't tell you why. It just says you spent less by $1,300 than you expected. Now, it could be a couple of reasons why. It could be one reason that you bought less quality materials than you usually buy. We don't know. It doesn't say that, right? It could be that we just bought a cheaper brand of material and saved money. In which case, look out, because maybe we're going to pay the price in efficiency for doing that. Or it could be that our normal supply of materials was on sale and we took advantage of it. So we don't know. The only thing we know is that we spent less. And that's important because if we bought cheaper units, less quality, we might pay the price in our material efficiency variance coming up. All right, go to 13. For the current period production levels, Belmonte Flooring Company budgeted 11,000 board feet of production and purchased 15,000 board feet. The cost was budgeted at seven per foot, but the actual cost was 850. What was Belmonte Corp's material price variance for the period? Whether you bought better quality or not, we don't know, but it's gonna come out to an unfavorable price variance, isn't it? So we know to knock out B, which has gotta be A, C, or D, and that $1.50 of additional cost times what we actually purchased will give us the material price variance. 22.5. Yep, letter A, unfavorable 22.5. Because the second variance we need to know about materials is did we use more or use less than we budgeted to make a certain level of product? Because each, let's say each table requires the use of four legs, right? You don't want any three-legged tables. But what if you wind up using five legs because one of the legs isn't strong enough, so you have to use a fifth one and throw away the one that wasn't good? That means you're going to use more materials, more legs than you expected to, and you'll have inefficiency in regard to the use of the material. Maybe you bought cheaper legs, but it turns out that some of them weren't good. So that's where we're going to put these material variances together and find out if we saved money on the price, that might look like good news, might turn out to be bad news. We won't know until we determine the direct material usage variance, which was on slide 16. Remember, the focus of any variance is what's inside the parentheses. So let's go inside the parentheses of the direct material usage variance. We find it's the actual quantity used, how many legs were used, minus the standard quantity allowed to make that many tables. How many legs should we have used? And if we used more legs than we should have, that's inefficiency. So the focus is on usage of materials rather than cost. Now, if higher quality materials are purchased, the material price variance will be unfavorable, right? If we spent more money on materials than we expected because we bought higher quality materials, the price variance will probably be unfavorable. But the material usage variance should be favorable. It certainly should be if we bought the higher quality. Higher quality should mean less waste. Less waste and more efficiency, right? So that's what we're going to find out. Did purchasing the higher quality material result in more efficiency? Hopefully it did. Hopefully it was enough efficiency to justify the higher price of material. Go to 17. The purchase of higher than standard quality material would likely result in what? A, 
Right, if you buy higher than standard quality material, you can expect an unfavorable price variance, but a favorable usage variance, right? All right, let's go to 19 and let's try to determine the direct material usage variance based on this information where it says we purchased and used 6,500 pounds of material, should have only used 6,000 pounds Actual price 380, standard price four dollars. And they give us usually a little bit more information than we need. And let's determine the material efficiency variance, knowing that we only really are interested in the standard price, not the actual price. So now we're focusing in on the outside of the parentheses for a minute and saying that for any usage variance, any usage variance. It's always the standard price. All right, so 16, the focus is on the usage of materials rather than cost. Let's do the material efficiency variance. And the focus of this variance, what's inside the parenthesis, is not the prices, but the two quantities. The quantity used, 6,500 pounds, the standard quantity allowed to be used for making this many units, 6,000 pounds. In English, we should have only used 6,000 pounds, but we used 6,500 pounds. That's inefficient. That's 500 pounds of inefficiency times the standard price tells you exactly the dollar amount of your inefficiency, which is what? 2,000 unfavorable. There's your inefficiency, letter C. Now, at the same time, we know it was inefficient. But we did save money. If you recall, the actual price is 380 and the standard price was $4. So we bought cheaper goods. And when you do that, when you buy cheaper material, you often sacrifice efficiency and quality. And that's what happened. Let's see which came out better, though. Was it a good idea to buy the cheaper price, the 380 units? Because we know we had inefficiency of $2,000, unfavorable efficiency. But what was the material price variance? that maybe would have made this worthwhile for us? Did we save more or less than $2,000 on the price of the material? How would we go back and do the price variance for this? The two prices, because we want to compare, we know we were inefficient with the usage by $2,000, but let's see if the price was favorable enough to make it worthwhile to be that wasteful by $2,000. We saved 20 cents times the actual quantity purchased of 6,500, right? So what did we save in dollars? 20 cents times 6,500 actually purchased, right? So we saved $1,300 in the price, buying the cheaper materials. We saved $1,300, but we were wasteful by $2,000. So it looks like it was a bad decision to buy the cheaper goods by $700. Our net material variance was unfavorable net by $700. So yeah, we saved money on the cost of the material, but we were so inefficient with the use of the material, we wiped out all our cost savings. Gain knowledge and information as to whether the company was overall efficient or inefficient. In this case, they were inefficient because even though they saved money on the cost of the material, by the time they got around to using the cheaper material, they were more wasteful.